All glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and without him, nothing is possible. In this technological era of social media, the age of the selfie, there are more false prophets on the face of the earth than there ever has been. And it's harder to discern wolves from sheep because the wolves are also preaching that Jesus is God in the flesh and that Jesus is Lord. First John chapter four, verse one to four, it says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now there are many out there who are teaching that Jesus was a created being. They're teaching, many of the Hebrew Israelites are teaching that he wasn't born of the Virgin Mary. And it is very essential that we understand as true believers, to true followers of the Messiah that not only must you believe that Christ died and was buried and after three days he, he rose again from the dead. The scripture says that God the Father raised him from the dead before he ascended back into heaven with the Father. He first descended into the pit to reestablish the kingdom and, and take the keys away from uh, Satan and give us the keys to the kingdom. He led captivity captive. Uh, those who were captive, he led out of captivity and he gave us the keys to the kingdom that whatever we find on earth will be bound in heaven. Also, he, the Christ, the Messiah, he gave us the gift of repentance and he left the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. So there are many, many works that Christ did in the flesh. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. OK, but he also gave us the power so that not only may our souls be redeemed, but in maintaining our sonship, our relationship with the Father, we would we would not be tormented by the enemy in, in our endurance, in our long suffering. We would have power given to us by Christ to deal with the enemy as he did in casting out demons. Okay. Jesus was not a created being. The scriptures tell us he was and is and is to come. Okay. The scriptures also tell us that the Father and the Son are one, okay? The Father points to the Son and the Son also points to the Father as God. Okay, how is it that the Father and the Son are God? And how is it that Christ was God in the flesh and when he was crucified, the universe and everything still ran like clockwork how is it that christ is, is the ancient of days as the scriptures describe him and he's able to navigate time effortlessly while still being in the past he's also in the present and the future there are just some things while whilst being in this flesh you won't comprehend because earth is three dimensions there's gravity on this place and there's also a veil that prohibits us
from seeing the spirit realm. The spirit realm has more than three dimensions. Okay, and I'll discuss that in another video. But I I love to be a student and I'm striving to be a disciple of the Most High. It's good to be both, but to go out and make videos and profess all of these heresies, okay, about the Most High, that's an offense, if not repented of, that's punished by eternal hell, to keep it real, okay, and there are a lot of false prophets out here who are doing so, all right, there are Hebrew Israelites, there are also so-called Christians who are taking sides of once saved, always saved, pre-tribulation rapture, again, teaching that Jesus was a created being, that he was just a vessel used in the flesh. All of this is heresy, okay? But there are men of God whom I listen to on YouTube one in particular who has passed on and the other who is still here with us. Those two men being the late Pastor Stephen Darby and also Pastor Isaac Harris in Texas. I believe Houston, Texas he's in. And his church is Revelation of Jesus Christ Ministries. And I just quickly wanted to mention to you some of the things that they've said in their teachings that really, really hit my soul and my spirit. Uh, Pastor Stephen Darby, uh, his church is in Louisville, Kentucky, and he passed away about two and a half years ago, or uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, one of the things he said was, you got to pray more than you do anything else. And that really hit me and my soul and my spirit because it takes time to make these videos. And if you couple that with all of the work that I have to do during my, my normal day job, okay, I do work for myself, but that takes quite a bit of my time and then having to edit these videos and produce them, do voice narrations and uh, uh, work through my website with the people I work with. It takes time. Okay. Um, but he said you got to pray more than you do anything else. All right. Pastor Isaac Harris uh, said the same thing. The Holy Spirit witnessed through these men to me that this is the truth and this is what what Christ means uh, in Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God that's your reasonable service Isaac Harris Pastor Isaac Harris said it might take you three hours to break through in your prayers Woo. That hit me. That hit me. Because praying is is a discipline, and it, 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 that's how you form a relationship with God by being in the presence of God. He said, uh, Pastor Isaac Harris said, "You got to deny claims on your own life." Okay, this body is just a meat suit. Okay, it's leased if I may use uh, a rental agreement terms, it's leased to this earth. That's why the body goes back to the earth once a person dies, okay? The, the earth is just the building that the body is leased in, that's, that, that is housed in, okay? Christ is the landlord, <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. That's, that's, if I'm going to use earthly terms, that's the way that I would describe it. Okay, this body doesn't belong to you. Okay, this, this body eventually gets repossessed. 
okay? The earth, the earth takes back the body. Even if you live to see the coming of Christ, when Christ comes in the clouds in all his glory, the brightness of his glory is going to destroy everyone, including those people who will be caught up. Okay, their soul, their spirit will be caught up to be with him. Remember, the scripture says, no flesh shall glory in his presence. Okay, it, it proverbially means no flesh, meaning no man shall uh, with pride shall be accepted by him. But it also literally means that as well. Okay, that the flesh will be destroyed. It will be good. Uh, even those who live to see the coming of Christ, their bodies will, will immediately be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And they'll be caught up with him spiritually, their, their spirit, their soul. Okay. Uh, the late pastor Stephen Darby, he, he said, sin cuts your years short. Okay, that's deep. Sin cuts your years short. And through my own studying and teaching I've learned that <clears throat> the, the, again there are, there are curses there are five major curses there are curses among, amongst this nation amongst every individual race of people each race of people I think that's overt that they have a curse each race has its own curse okay I have went, in, went into that with other videos okay there are bloodline curses in each family all men have sinned so there's some type of sin some type of curse that have passed down from the fathers to the sons from the mothers to the daughters and so forth okay there's the curse of Adam and Eve that have passed down to all men and women because all shall die okay and there is also a curse against the nation the land there are curses against every individual everything that you do that is sinful in some form or fashion big or small it brings about a curse okay uh, Stephen Darby also said in one of his videos you you should go check out uh, a lot of his videos <clears throat> at Stephen Darby Ministries.com they also have a YouTube channel he said you got to treat this body like an outside person okay I've said in previous videos that <clears throat> yes we are a three-part being you live in this body you have a soul and you also have a spirit okay the flesh which is this mortal meat suit is around this amount of years then when when you die you'll never ever ever see it again but the consequences that you did that brought upon upon consequences and repercussions in this body will eventually be in effect for all eternity rather that's for good or for bad okay the flesh is the most wicked of the three okay the flesh is your enemy amongst the three the spirit and the soul depending on how you harness and 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 take in the word of god and feed your spirit with the word of god then it also feeds your soul okay I, I, that's what he meant by treat this body like an outside person you can't do it without fasting because the body will begin to have hunger pains it, fight, it fights against you it wars against you with your past memories of sexual sin or whatever type of hate crime that is in your ancestral bloodline the, the, and, and again yeah, I, I'm going to be really making an emphasis of this. That is why when a white person sees a black person at nighttime, as they've said in the past with Mark Cuban, 
and he tried to really make light of it. If he sees a white guy all tatted up at nighttime or a black guy with a hoodie on, he'll cross the street. No, what that is is that there are some, some demons that have lived in your ancestral bloodline that is bringing to remembrance what your people did to that black man that makes you afraid that he's going to do the same thing to you. That's a deep, whole nother level teaching. Okay? That's the, that's the truth. That's the truth with sexual sin as well. You, you have sin catalogs that live in the flesh that the devil is able to replay back in your, your subconscious mind subliminally in your sleep, in your dreams. He's able to replay that back to attempt to reprogram you, to uh, bring you back into bondage of that same lifestyle of thinking or what, what you practice so he can manifest that in your life. I think that was real deep what he said. You got, that's why you got to treat this body like an outside person. That's why Christ said that if a man doesn't hate his mother or father or sister or brother or even his own life, he can't be my disciple. Okay, you literally have to hate the sin that this flesh has caused you to do. And therefore, if that means bring pain to this flesh by fasting, because that's all it is, is it's, it's dying. Okay, that's what fasting is doing. Then that's what you must do. That's what it means to present your body a living sacrifice to God. Okay, now I've mentioned this in other videos. It was uh, Stephen Darby who said that everyone in your life has either been sent by God or by the devil. Okay, and I just like the way that he broke down repentance, okay, and, uh, and how he broke down the curses of Deuteronomy and how fornication is a mixing of DNA. That's why it's wrong, okay? When, when you fornicate, you're actually, you don't know what DNA the other person has because everything dates back to what the fallen angels did in Genesis 6 it says the fallen angels came to mate with the daughters of men so generations later up to this present day that, that's had an effect on the bloodlines of man now in the New Testament that's why it said every man must have his own wife and every woman her own husband okay but in the, in the Old Testament they were able, men were able to have multiple wives. Okay. But in the New Testament, they're not. And I'll go deeper in that in another video. But um, wrapping up here, I like how Pastor Isaac Harris also described how Satan is an ancient spirit. Okay. He's an ancient spirit. He, he deceived uh, uh, the fallen angels he deceived one third of the angels from uh, uh, leaving their first estate and they were already in eternity in perfection okay so how much less are we you know God made a little lower than the angels so how much deception are we uh, uh, vulnerable to the enemies? tactics the schemes of the devil okay now there are other men of God whom uh, they're you know they preach the truth about certain things but from what I've heard okay the complete gospel especially the late pastor Steve and Darby those two men really really place good emphasis on a variety of things in relationship with the Most High and serving God and a lot of the revelations, the things, the mysteries of God, okay? Because the more 
that's again that's why I have revelation gate I have salvation gate and deliverance gate they touched on all three from a revelation deliverance and salvation standpoint that's like a one stop shop okay type of gospel and it's rare okay there are other men of God out there who've had some good messages Pastor Omar, Omar Tebow of uh, the School of Hebrews okay also Minister Kevin L.A. Ewing he, he really talks a lot about dreams okay in the spirit world alright he, he focuses on that and one of the things he mentioned that I thought gave great insight into the motive of evil spirits is that every time you have a dream and there's confusion or there's setback or you're in an unfamiliar setting or uh, uh, someone's coming to feed you something in a dream that's the evil spirit either coming to establish a satanic covenant strengthen a satanic covenant or reinforce a satanic covenant and I thought that was a great way that he explained that and I also like his uh, testimony of how he came to Christ okay the curses and everything that he overcame and that's what I'm looking for I'm looking to uh, network with people who are like-minded okay not to say that uh, the people I mentioned but I'm, I just mean in general the people who are of the same mind and they are not captivated by the matrix okay uh, may God rest the soul of the late pastor Stephen Darby and I know someday will rejoice with them in heaven but that's all I have for today I just wanted to place emphasis on being aware of false prophets okay because there are many out there who are working hard to deceive the masses but that's all I have subscribe to the channel also like the video to help truth get out to the public and remember, Jesus loves you, but he demands obedience.